welcome everybody. It's great to uh, be with you again. I can't uh, wait for these monthly meetings. It's lovely to see so many uh, familiar faces from all over the world. Uh, you're very welcome. And I really do look forward to this enriching hour together. Um, you may have come here through a mail shop that talked about um, us being in a phase now of rebuilding and how maybe in that phase we can look to Nehemiah as an example. Uh, we're hearing now a lot of politicians talking about we need to rebuild, but we need, need to build back better. We need to build back better than what we had before. And I think the story of Nehemiah can help us to do that, because that's exactly what he did. But um, with regard to this next hour, we're going to be thinking how we can rebuild back better using emotional intelligence. We often think of uh, God, even non-Christians think of God as being a supremely intelligent being, but we don't always think about God's emotional intelligence. And I've been thinking about this leading up uh, to this get together and thinking how the Holy Spirit is a supreme source of emotional intelligence. You probably uh, know these words from Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What an amazing list, what an amazing summary of the emotional intelligence that the Holy Spirit grows in us as fruits of the Spirit. So we look to the Holy Spirit to grow those uh, virtues, those, those aspects of emotional intelligence within us. But there's also steps that we can actively take. It's not a passive thing of just allowing the Holy Spirit to do this. We can do something to help that growth of that fruit. And so I want to read another passage, and it's uh, just a verse from Philippians 4, verse 8, where Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. It's an unbelievably positive mindset that's been encouraged here, isn't it? And for me, that provides the key for how we can allow the Holy Spirit to grow emotional intelligence with us is actually to take this step and to take it on a regular daily basis. And I think some of this will be underlined in, in Karen's talk because it's been found to increase well-being by well-being scientists that aren't Christians. They find that those that do take time to think about what's going well in their lives however dramatically wrong they're going, there must be something that's good that has happened today to think about that, to, to preferably uh, put it in a journal and to give thanks for it, whether people are Christians or not, just be thankful that it's happened. So I think there's um, emotional intelligence on offer and I think there's a key to unlocking it. And so um, I'm really excited to uh, hand over now, uh, just after I pray at least, to Karen. She's going to introduce herself, um, but she is the uh, author of this book, and uh, I can prove I've got a copy, Call to Influence. <laughs> She'll mention it later. I do recommend it, and it's about uh, leadership and uh, the call to leadership, and most of what she says today is contained in some of the chapters in that book, especially on uh, the importance of relationships. So let's pray for her and then we turn over to her. Let's pray. Father, thank you that however much we lack the intelligence that we're thinking about today, thank you that the Holy Spirit is full of it. And we pray that as we uh, think about whatever is pure and holy and good, 
you will grow that fruit of the spirit in us that we may truly build back better in the coming days and weeks and months in jesus name amen over to you karen Thank you very much, Peter. So today's talk I have titled Keeping Emotionally Balanced in Challenging Times. But first, just a little bit of background so you know a little bit about me. Um, yesterday, Mark and I celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary. We have three amazing children, Jack, Brad and Georgie. And I would be remiss if I didn't give you a picture of the final member of our family who's probably enjoyed uh, the whole lockdown experience the most. And that's Eli, Eli, our 45 kilo Labanese. I set up my business leading leaders 20 years ago, offering one-to-one -one leadership coaching and facilitating leadership development teams, programs, basically, I go into companies and I teach Jesus leadership and the kingdom of heaven. I just don't always call it that. And my experiences of learning to navigate this journey led to writing my first book that Peter has mentioned, Called to Influence, How to Become a Kingdom Style Leader in Your Workplace. And it does have three chapters on relational leadership that expands on what I'm gonna be covering today. And then very excitedly, um, in February this year, we launched our modular group training series, which is um, applicable not just for uh, church settings, but also for work-based Christian groups. And again, that has a whole module on cultivating healthy relationships, both the workbook, which accompanies the training series, and the book are available on our website, www.calltoinfluence.com. I'm sure many of you will have struggled at some point over the last hundred days of lockdown emotionally. And in these extraordinary times, more than ever, successful business requires us to keep a constant flow of conversations and connection with people, whether it's our clients, our suppliers, customers, work colleagues. People make a business and through these relationships comes the opportunity to influence and lead like Jesus. But being relational, it requires us to manage our emotions so that relationships can remain healthy and strong. Emotions are part of us. They're neither right nor wrong. It's how we manage them that makes the difference. And the Bible clearly warns us about double mindedness, that we must be aware of Satan's deception and how he tries to break down relationships. In James 1, 6, like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. And emotions steer us in many directions, affecting our mood, our tone and our behaviour daily. Many are actually taught that emotions are bad. So we invest considerable time trying to ignore them in the hope that they will just go away, but they don't. They hang around like annoying backseat drivers, blocking our ability to build and maintain good relationships. And if we allow it, this chatterbox voice transmitting negative thoughts about self and the world around us, the lies impact on our expectations, they govern our behavior, they lead us to view experiences in a way that reinforces those lies. They become like a repetitive loop playing in our thinking and when left unchecked become constraints choking the abundant life that God intended for us. So to understand how this internal chatterbox voice has taken up residence, let's have a very brief look at how your belief system is created. So if you imagine at birth, when you come into this wonderful world, you come in with a clean belief system, a bit like an empty memory stick. But from day one, you gather and absorb information. 
everything that happens to us, what we sense, we feel, we hear, we see, actual and importantly also perceived, we store it all. We take things personally. At a very early age, we start to make positive and negative decisions about ourselves and the world around us. By seven, we have sorted and refiled all this evidence and start what we call the comparison game, judging and comparing ourselves against other children. Is she prettier, cleverer, popular? And we keep adding this evidence to prove we are right and reach adulthood with our own custom made belief system lens about ourselves and the world around us, both positive and negative. And such negative thoughts, they get activated and they go on display for everyone to pick up. Similarly, with people's belief systems, other people's go off and we end up with what I call the mood music in the room. Now, as adults, what we sense, we feel, we see, often has little to do with the current issue, but rather a combination of each person's emotional experiences from the past. And when a negative trigger is activated, it can cause us to hold back, create stress, harm our relationships with others and also ourselves. So what is a trigger? A trigger consists of a thought plus an emotion. Thoughts often have a negative undertone. You know, I feel disregarded. I feel unloved, powerless, out of control. The expression, the emotion expressed might be joy, might be anger, sadness, guilt, shame, fear. And the emotion, amount of emotion attached to that thought determines the size and potential impact of that trigger. And triggers are like dominoes. Once one goes off, the others cascade as well. So what triggers might you have and what impact do they have daily? Make a note of the triggers on this list that are resonating for you as these might just be a good place for you to start. Think about the negative messaging your chatterbox transmits to you. It may be around not good enough, stupid, failure, disregarded, unsupported, unworthy, unloved, controlled, powerless, weak. Maybe it's around be perfect, be strong, responsible, duty, loyalty. You know, as you project your triggers into the world, they reflect back at you. It's a vicious cycle of the more I see it, the more I Sorry, the more I believe it, the more I see it. And the more I see it, the more I believe it. And this is the deception that Satan has used for years to slowly trap you. If you have a not good enough on your lens, you'll look for evidence to prove you're not good enough. You see everything the world reinforces to you about being not good enough. And so, of course, you're proving yourself right. And such negative thinking throws you off balance emotionally and you are unable to function at your best. Romans 12 verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So choose to see yourself as God sees you and stop buying into Satan's deception. Recognize your triggers and replace them with godly truths. There will be one or two lies in your pattern of thinking that activate your triggers, usually around fear of failure and fear of rejection. Be aware when you speak these lies over yourself. For example, I'm so stupid, no one cares. Recognize Satan's captivity cycle of captivity and choose to shift your thinking to something that is more positive. Recognize Satan's cycle of captivity and by shifting it, you will realize that you can move from failure is not an option to failure is a chance to learn and grow. 
if 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 you do this, then what you see happen is your expectation shift and with it, your experience. I love these passages in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself, who Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And then it goes on in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So ask God, is there a lie I'm believing about myself? And as he shares this with you, follow the process of repenting and renouncing the lie. Give the lie to God and ask him to replace with truth. You know, God is so kind. He always responds. And as you begin to understand the truth of who you are and walk with godly values and beliefs, you are better positioned to cultivate healthy relationships from a place of emotional maturity. You know, triggers are most likely to go off when you're tired, stressed, unwell and out of balance. And in such challenging times that we are living today, you may recognize a few of these symptoms. So here is a list of ideas to help you build greater balance into your life. And as we're going through these, make a note of the ones you relate to, as these might just be a great place to start. And then you can build in others in a daily routine as you go. So first of all, prioritize your time with God. Feed yourself spiritually and relational. Enjoy reading God's word. Enjoy sharing with him your joys and disappointments and hear his loving affirmation over you. Be aware of your internal chatterbox voice and use the request to be denied. Don't buy into Satan's negative, ungodly publicity to you. Respond to the chatterbox voice lies with that request denied. Recognize the lie, actually laugh at it because it's a lie. Renounce it and exchange it with God's truth. Be honest and authentic with your thoughts and feelings and don't wear masks. They simply push people away. List and celebrate success alongside thanking God daily. And alongside this one, list and celebrate what you are grateful for every day to cultivate a heart of gratitude. God is good even when we're facing difficult times. Number six, when people acknowledge you, don't shy away from it, absorb it, receive it, say thank you. Number seven, do not compare yourself to others. You are unique, so run your race that is your race and don't try and run other people's. Number eight, learn to say no rather than over allowing around others. And if you want to learn how to say no, because you know you can't say it, then practice it in the shower. No, 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 no. Number nine, have a should free day. Prioritize what is absolutely essential. And you know what? The rest can wait. Participate in life that you enjoy, a purposeful work, friends, family, activities. Get the balance of this right for you. Plan in rest time every week. You know, you're not designed to work 24 seven. Consider what you eat and drink, your sleep and your exercise pattern. You know, your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit, so make it a pleasant place for him to live. Number 13, plan holidays and ensure you get a break. And you know what? Your laptop and your mobile phone can both stay at home because the world of work can exist without you. And finally, set and write down goals. Review them regularly. We have a father who is so lavish, he loves to bring forth big dreams. So I hope you have found this presentation helpful, having greater awareness of your emotional intelligence and using this list will help you keep emotionally balanced in challenging times.